hello everyone welcome back in this session we are going to discuss about the newton's first law of motion you know the story of uh, uh, newton that when a apple falls on the head of the newton so he started thinking that why this apple have to fall down why it is not going up and by thinking like that uh, he uh, also uh, did say uh, so many uh, experiment regarding this he used to go to the uh, large mountains and he used to jump up and up and again he used to fall down and so uh, and by making so many other ac activities and experiments on this uh, he gave the uh, newton three laws and he he also derived what is meant by the force so what this force is doing and how the force is acting on each and every body so Newton's first law. See, we can uh, define that uh, Newton's first law as like this: a body which is at rest remains at rest, and a body which is in motion will be in motion unless, up to what extent it will be like that means unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Unless an unbalanced force acts on it, a body which is at rest will be at rest. and a body which is in motion will be in motion or uh, we can give uh, in another way like this also uh, if the vector sum of all forces if the vector sum of all forces acting on a body is zero then and only the body remains unaccelerated see uh, <coughs> for that you consider a block and on this block a 20 newton force is acting in this direction and a 20 newton force is acting in opposite direction so what we call these forces balanced forces equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so if only this force is acting on the block the block will move towards this force if only this force is acting on the block the block will move towards this force as the two forces are acting and the two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction the block will remain here itself so these are called as balanced forces and as it is horizontal these are horizontal forces so the horizontal forces balance each other now if you consider the vertical forces we know that mg will act vertically downward which that is nothing but the weight of the block and the upward force will be the normal force and which will be equal to this mg n equal to mg that means these are also vertical forces are also balanced forces so whenever the balanced forces are we have uh, said that the vector sum of all the forces no so f net that means total forces acting on the body f net equal to 20 newton let us consider the horizontal forces 20 minus 20 no why because they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so minus so 20 minus 20 zero so the net force acting on the body is zero and here also as we said that n equal to mg the Uh, vertical forces are also zero so the whenever the vector sum of all forces acting on the body is zero then the body will remain at rest or it may move with uniform motion it may be at rest or it may move with uniform motion so we call this as unaccelerated unaccelerated so unaccelerated state means we can't say the body completely at rest or uh, completely in motion it may be at rest or it may be in uniform motion there will be no acceleration see whenever there is a unbalanced force definitely there will be acceleration here there are balanced forces so that's why the body remains unaccelerated that means it may be at rest or it may be in uniform motion okay 
And here, uh, let us see one example also for uh, balanced forces. You consider a person is uh, jumping from a, a very uh, height, a certain height, with the help of a, a parachute. A person is jumping from certain height with the help of the parachute and the downward force acting by the person is some 500 Newton and the upward force acting is also 500 Newton. What is the upward force here? Air resistance will be the upward force. So the air resistance acting is 500 Newton. So as this are balanced forces 500 500 no so balanced forces definitely the body must be or it may be at rest or uniform motion as he is falling down we can say that he is in uniform motion he is not accelerating if uh, the gravitational force is completely acting on him without this parachute means then definitely he will be accelerated force will act on him uh, a unbalanced force will act on him and uh, he will be in acceleration but here a balanced force is acting even though gravity is acting on him uh, that gravitational force is balanced by the air resistance with, with the help of the parachute so that's why uh, here the forces are balanced each other so we call this as balanced force and the person is unaccelerated and he will be in uniform motion he will uh, get down very calmly newton's first law explains about force qualitatively and uh, here a first law uh, is also trying to explain about the inertia see this inertia is nothing but it is the inherent property of a body inertia is the inherent property of a body which opposes the change of state of rest or motion of a body that means a body which is at rest it want to be at rest only so uh, it won't don't want to come into motion and a body which is in motion it want to be in motion only it won't uh, want to be come into rest so it is the inherent property of a body which opposes the change of state that is inertia and inertia mainly depends upon the mass of the body if the mass of the body increases inertia increases if the mass of the body decreases inertia also will decrease if you consider a, a metal ball and a rubber ball which will have more inertia means we can say that the metal ball will have more inertia while comparing to a, a rubber ball as the metal ball is having a more mass we can say that it is having more inertia a rubber while comparing to the rubber ball so the measure of inertia is mass so that's why the unit of inertia is a uh, measured in terms of kilograms inertia unit is kilogram and this inertia so that is about inertia and this inertia is again of uh, three types the first one is inertia of rest inertia of uh, motion and thirdly inertia of direction or direction so these are the three different types of inertias and coming to the first type inertia of rest so uh, the resistance uh, we can define like this the resistance offered by a body to oppose the change of state of rest of a body is called as inertia of rest so <clears throat> by discussing some examples you may get about the idea of this inertia of rest see for example you consider a person sitting in a bus which is at rest if the bus started suddenly what happened to the person if it is moving suddenly like this we will have a the, or the person who is sitting inside the bus will have a backward jerk why he is having a backward jerk initially the bus is at rest so as the passenger is sitting inside the bus he is also at rest when the bus starts suddenly the person is able to or he will try to be at rest 
so that's why he will have a, a backward jerk and <coughs> we can uh, uh, consider this one also uh, you consider a ripen fruit for a, a ripen mango fruit for the tree so it is very uh, high that we can't uh, go and catch it so at that time you may hit that with stone and you can take it or else if you shake the branch branch uh, where the mango is if you shake the branch vigorously then definitely the fruit will detach from the branch and we can get it so while shaking the branch what happens is uh, initially the fruit is at rest branch is also at rest but when we are shaking the branch come to motion but the fruit want to be still at rest so due to the inertia of rest of the fruit the fruit will be detached from the branch and it will fall down due to gravity and while playing caroms we will arrange the coins carom coins as a pile and if you hit the downward coin only the downward coin will get away and remaining all coins will will be set as a pile again so that is also due to inertia of rest of the coins and see if you want to take out the dust from the doormat what we will do we will take the doormat and we will hit with the stick so by hitting that like that uh, the dust particles will come outside as the dust particles uh, are uh, on the doormat and they are at the state of rest and while we are hitting the doormat will come to in a sudden motion but the dust particles tends to be still at rest so due to that the dust particles will come out due to the inertia of rest of the dust particles so like that we can uh, consider many uh, examples for the inertia of rest and next coming to the inertia of motion we can define like this the resistance offered by a body to oppose the change of motion of a body is called as inertia of motion see for that we can uh, give some examples like if you are uh, <coughs> owning a fan in your home if you stop switch off the fan uh, now can you say that suddenly the fan also will stop no even though if you switch off also for some time the fan will still rotate that is due to inertia of motion and if you consider a athlete who is uh, having a long jump he, before uh, going to the long jump he will run some distance so by running some distance very fastly he can gain the large amount of this inertia of motion so by that he can have a long jump okay so uh, can you uh, if a person is running with some uh, uh, 40 km per hour see uh, is it possible to stop the person suddenly no if you call him also he will run for some distance and he will, then he will stop or uh, see some persons will uh, jump out from the running train or a running bus see what happens to them definitely they will fall down and they will break their legs so while jumping from a, a running train or a running bus what they have to do is they uh, they are in motion along with the bus or the train so while jumping definitely they will uh, suddenly they will be in tend to the uh, rest while hitting the ground but it's not like that uh, they will be they will having the some inertia of motion so due to that they are getting hurt so if uh, the bus is our uh, train in the motion uh, while jumping from it we have to run some distance to satisfy this inertia of motion so by that a person who is jumping from the or uh, getting down from the train on a platform will be safe and a person who is traveling in a bus he can uh, feel a forward jerk see if a bus is going very fastly and if the driver uh, suddenly he have a break there so uh, due to that sudden break what will happen to the passengers inside the bus they will have a forward jerk that is due to inertia of motion up to that moment all the passengers are in motion along with the bus but the bus come to the rest position suddenly so due to that what happens is uh, the down part of the passengers will come to rest along with the bus 
but the upper part of the person will be in motion will tend to be in motion so due to that they will have a forward jerk and next uh, if you consider that inertia of direction we can define like this the resistance offered by a body to oppose the change of direction of a body is called as inertia of direction see for that we can uh, say like this uh, you consider you are sitting in a moving bus and if the bus is having a leftward turn we will have a right fall if the bus is having a rightward turn we will have the leftward fall so that is due to inertia of direction of the body who is not the passenger who is sitting in the bus and you tie a stone to a thread and you start drilling like this while drilling if the thread is cut off suddenly what happened to the stone the stone which is having a circular motion uh, when the stone is uh, what we call it, when the thread is cut it will fly off tangentially that is also due to inertia of direction and you can do some uh, small small activities uh, basing on this inertia of direction consider a bicycle and uh, you place the bicycle wheel half of the wheel should be in water and half of uh, should be outside the water so if you start to rotate the wheel what happens see you consider uh, this as a wheel and uh, that wheel is half immersed in water and half it is outside so while uh, if you try now you try to rotate the wheel what happens the uh, water droplets will fly tangentially the water droplets will fly tangentially due to inertia of direction so like that we can observe so many examples and we can do some activities regarding this inertia of direction or uh, you consider you are uh, moving in a rain when it, when it is raining if you take an umbrella and if you catch the umbrella like this and you just rotate the umbrella see what the water droplets which are falling on the umbrella will fly off tangentially is it or not yes that is due to inertia of direction so like that in newton's first law uh, mainly tells us about the uh, unbalanced forces and unbalanced forces if, the, if there are balanced forces definitely the body may be at rest or it may be in uniform motion if it is a unbalanced force acting on it definitely the body will have some acceleration and it explains about uh, the term inertia see a body which is at rest will remain at rest and a body which is in motion will be in motion this this says about uh, it explains about inertia and the inertia are of three types inertia of rest inertia of motion inertia of direction thank you